Tens of thousands of Pakistan's regular and paramilitary forces have been battling insurgents to secure the country's northwestern, federally administered tribal area, which consists of seven districts or agencies. The counter-insurgency operations have mainly targeted militant bases in six of the seven tribal agencies and are said to have flushed out militants from most of the rugged mountainous territory. Authorities flew a group of reporters to the front line near the Afghan border early this month to showcase the military gains. Major General Nadir Zeb, the Inspector General of Pakistan's paramilitary frontier corps, says almost all the tribal districts were under the control of Taliban and Al-Qaeda militants until three years ago. And now, in 2011, there are places like maybe a little portion in Mamand, which inshallah we will clear very soon, a little portion in Khyber Agency, that is Tira Valley, and a little portion in Mamun Zai, that is Aurak Zai Agency in Central Kurum. Very thin belt is left. The rest is all cleared. Authorities say the restoration of government control has encouraged tens of thousands of families displaced by the rise of militancy in the region and subsequent counter-insurgency operations to return to their homes. Tim Irwin of the United Nations Refugee Agency says many of those he talks to feel they will be able to resume their lives. Many of them were farmers and they were confident that they would be able to again go back to uh, being a farmer. Um, so my impression was that they either had direct experience of perhaps having gone back to the region and seen for themselves or they had enough information that they felt that they were making an informed decision. This tribal elder in the Moment district says extremists linked to the Taliban had taken the entire population hostage and were forcing young men to join their ranks. But life, he says, is back to normal for his community. And several hundred children are back in this school near the front lines just a few kilometers from the Afghan border, once used as a militant stronghold. Despite being allies in the anti-terror war, American and NATO-led forces have long accused Pakistan's military of not preventing cross-border militant raids into Afghanistan. Pakistani authorities say they have more or less addressed those concerns. In turn, they now charge that since NATO forces have left their outposts in Afghanistan's Kunar and Nuristan provinces, fugitive Pakistani militants and Afghan insurgents have been able to regroup and try to stage a comeback. That is where our main problem is. Because you must have heard that we've carried out so many operations. But each time we find again this thing coming up. Counter-terrorism officials in Washington recently questioned the effectiveness of the Pakistan military's anti-militant campaign, especially its ability to hold areas it has regained. Even critics at home are skeptical about the claims of battlefield progress in the traditionally hostile tribal region. Ayaz Wazir is Pakistan's former ambassador to Kabul. Tell me where have you pacified the area? Mahmand is still burning, Bajawad is still burning, South Waziristan is still burning, Aurakza is still burning. But Pakistani military commanders dispute the criticism. Army spokesman Major General Athar Abbas. We are going very cautiously. We want to be very sure-footed. When we establish a successful military operation uh, control, then the people should support that. The people should take the ownership of that. And therefore, you see a uh, uh, sort of uh, cautious and uh, slow pace in the operation. While Pakistan points to its success in six of the border districts, the United States and many independent observers see the remaining North Waziristan tribal territory as a major threat to efforts to bring peace and stability to Afghanistan. <laughs> North Waziristan is home to the Al-Qaeda-linked Haqqani network, which is believed to be organizing deadly cross-border raids on U.S. and NATO forces. The Haqqani network rumored to have ties to Pakistan's spy agency, the ISI, is apparently not hostile to the Pakistani army. But the army denies that it has gone easy on the group.
That is not true and this is completely a false allegation. The military points out it has more than 30,000 troops in North Waziristan. And it claims the impression that the region is beyond the control of the state and has become a center of terrorism is mere exaggeration. They do have some militants in these areas, they do have some pockets in these areas of our border, but then the major uh, problem is in uh, Afghanistan. But while Pakistan is apparently reluctant to go after the militant bases in North Waziristan, suspected US drone strikes have intensified in the border region, killing dozens of insurgents, including high-profile Al-Qaeda figures. Pakistan's latest claims of progress in the war against terror networks on its soil come weeks after a secret US helicopter raid located and killed fugitive Al-Qaeda chief Osama bin Laden in the Pakistani garrison town of Abbottabad. While the country's civilian and military leaders deny any link to bin Laden's hideout, suspicions remain that rogue elements within the Pakistani security establishment have ties to Al-Qaeda operatives. Admiral Mike Mullen, the chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, made that evident during a trip to Islamabad late last month. I harbor no illusions about the difficulties ahead, nor do I leave here misinformed about the trust which still needs to be rebuilt between our two militaries. As the United States prepares to begin a phased withdrawal of its combat troops from Afghanistan, U.S. military commanders believe Pakistan's counter-insurgency efforts in the border region are vital for a smooth transfer of security responsibility from NATO to Afghan forces. But for now, the issue of going after militants in North Waziristan remains a source of friction between Washington and Islamabad. Ayaz Gul for VOA News, Islamabad.